Hello, everybody. Welcome into another edition of The Rundown. Brandon Worth, Mark Holcomb with you. It's a very coyote-friendly episode here on the show. We Our, like it like that. We like it like that. <laughs> we love JT and we love Jason. We hear they're on vocal rest. They will be ready for Friday's game. You can count on it on Big Country. We'll have the playoff game. We'll break down all of that, what happened in round one, as well as some other games that we have on the There's docket. There's a few. There's a few. Really good ones. So yeah. we'll get into that. But first, big thanks to Michigan A Dash. You can head on down uh, to 19 Mile Road and Northland Drive. If you have a cracked windshield and you need it not only fixed, but recalibrated with all the fancy sensors to make sure that you are the right distance away from your vehicle, take it on down there to Michigan A Dash, a proud sponsor of the rundown. So we'll get right into it here, Mark. And obviously, we don't have anybody to argue with. So we're going to go with Reed City first, right? So Manistee. A really good team, five and four coming into this game. They had been up and they had been down quite a bit this year in consistency. Uh, but I think the number one thing uh, that Reed City proved uh, in that Manistee game, their responsiveness, their really ability to adapt against that flex bone, I think was really impressive because that first drive they came down, they scored, and, and it was looking a little bleak, but the defense settled right in. The edges especially, yep. looking at Gogolowski, looking at Woodside, the backers were flying all over the sidelines, and, and that's the way that you want to play against a lot of these athletic teams, which we're going to see you know, this week, which we'll get to that preview here in just a minute. But, uh, I mean, big day from the running backs, three of them over triple digits. And Preston Wayne really stepped in in a big way, filling in uh, for Owen Williams, who was out in this game. I mean, it's just the next guy up for Coach Shankel. And you can see it on the stat sheet, and you can see it on the field. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned that during the game last week. Who was going to be the guy? Was it going to be McKinney? Was it going to be Wayne back there? Ended up moving McKinney to the outside. And Wayne only had 121 yards. Only. That's all. To join Keanis's 124 and Coppock's 100. 59. So just a great offensive uh, performance by the Coyotes, especially the running backs on Friday night. Yeah, I was really impressed. Obviously, we didn't say the, the takeaways as far as on the defensive side, but I was impressed especially, and you brought this stat to me, and I'll let you pull it out here in just a minute, but first level tackling. Every good team does it to a T, and they did it last week in a, in a big way. You weren't relying on the safeties and the D-backs to bring down a lot of guys. That shows assignment football. That's what Coach Daling wants. That's what Coach Schott, Scott Schenkel wants, and I think that's what Coyote fans like to see. They like to see the first guy to get hands on the back to bring him down to the ground and not let anybody slip away. Yeah, our front six had 31 solo tackles between them. Landon Jackson had three, but we talked about that. All three of his solo tackles were on their first drive. First drive. When they were getting around the edge. After that first drive, Kiannis had two tackles for the whole game. So our D-backs then, what that allows us to do, Brandon, is play assignment football against the pass. And uh, I think we saw some great coverage because the front six for the Coyotes in the middle were able to shut that down and cover the edge. Schenkel even mentioned that in the paper this week. He did. How quick we were to cover the edge in that ball game. Mentioned that, too, about how we saw that at Beale City. Uh, we're just getting fast on the outside right when we need to. Absolutely. And for this team, they're battle-tested, right? Very similar to the opponent here that we'll get in just a minute. Obviously, Pontiac, Notre Dame, Kingsley, playing Glen Lake and Beale City as well. D8 teams, not getting as many points, but they're better than some of the D4 teams that other conference teams are playing. And so it just goes to show uh, how good this team is. We look at this week on the other side, the Stanish Sterling Panthers. I mean, this is a team that we will be playing for the third time. We have yet to beat the Panthers on paper. We're 0-2 against them in our only two meetings. Um, and this is a very similar team. They're tough. They have athleticism. And they are very battle-tested. They took down a team over at LC. Many people know them from last week and that upset they pulled off against number two, Almont. But they, they played good against Ogemaw. They were able to get the win there. Uh, they fell to Gladwin and Claire. Those are teams that you look at and you're like, yeah, you're looking at March Madness. That's not a bad loss, right? That's a quality loss that we would call it. Uh, and so that's a, it's an impressive program. And they got a lot of athletes. You're going to see their quarterback especially. Uh, Brody slings the ball around. He is a really fun player to watch. He can scramble in the pocket, out of the pocket uh, as well. They got a couple of speedsters at receiver. Uh, they got a couple really talented ends. So the tackles are going to be especially looking at guys like Ethan Thompson, looking at guys especially on the other side of the Guayat Spalo. Those guys are going to be tested this week. Uh, but I think especially uh, the run game, if we can get seals inside those good blocking schemes where we can get a lot of those multi-facet block plays and getting upfield, we do have a really good chance. They do have a pretty solid secondary, you would say. Uh, they are susceptible to 
runs that can be broken up the middle of the field. We saw that in games like Ithaca this year uh, on film. You could see that a little bit. And as well, Olgamal did that a little bit. Um, so there's going to be some opportunity for this offense. And if this offensive line keeps blocking like they have been, especially the way that the defensive line has really done a great job of contain. Offensive line, if they can get to the next level and block, we should have opportunities to score on this team. But more importantly, defensively, going to have to contain the quarterback because he's a playmaker and he's going to extend plays as many times as he wants to. But will he be to the outsides or will he be inside and be able to be tackled? That's going to be a big question this week. Yeah, I think last week, Brandon, Manistee's quarterback had the ability to try to scramble as well. He tried to get to the outside, but I think what our DNs and our two outside linebackers did really well was contain him. They didn't let him get outside of them. We've talked about that multiple times this year, how key it is for our defense to not allow them to get the edge, to keep them in the middle of the field, because that's where the strength of our defense is. Absolutely, and we'll go over especially to Big Rapids and Whitehall here. Uh, Big Rapids did not play their best game on Friday night. They know it. We know it. That was a really tough game against Ludington that a lot of people would say, and them themselves would say, that game should have been over a lot earlier. And so they're looking for revenge, but you know who else is looking for revenge? The Vikings, after last yeah. year in that district final. They were a team that were destined in some people's minds in media brackets to get all the way to the Final Four. They get knocked down in the district final round by this Big Rapids team. So they're going to be ready for this game. Big Rapids are going to have to play really well. I mean, Cam Thompson is one of the most talented players in all of West Michigan. That kid, you watch him on film, you can see why a lot of schools at the Division I level are looking at him. He's going to make a lot of plays. He's got a lot of playmakers and skills as well. Uh, a really weird game against Forest Hills. There was like a lot of things that happened in sequence that made that game super interesting. Forest Hills was fortunate enough to get a blocked punt pass completion that led to a forward fumble to a scoop and score. <laughs> really strange, but they were still able to get the job done there at Forest Hills, but I think especially, you mentioned it when we came into the prep mark, Big Rapids, if they play like they did last week and we saw what Whitehall did last week, this could get out of hand really quickly. Big Rapids are going to have to dial in. They're going to have to play really well in the secondary and contain, contain that quarterback. Otherwise, he's got a lot of big playmaking ability. Well, motivated. Right, Whitehall's motivated coming into this game. But let's look at it from the Big Rapids side. Maybe the best thing, number one, besides the fact that they escaped that game last week, is the way that Whitehall handled Ludington. And you know these are kids. Me the mental aspect of the game could come into play where maybe they think, you know, uh, we handled Ludington. They struggled against Ludington. This should be a walkthrough. Um, but they, they're they also motivated because of what the Cardinals did down on their field last year. So that's going to be one of many great football games uh, this Friday night, which they all should be, right? Yes. Your top 16 teams in every uh, division. So it's uh, anybody can win these games. Uh, on Friday night, and it's just going to be there's going to be a lot of fun to be here at Alumni Field as well as scoreboard watching. Absolutely, we'll watch. We'll get to the scoreboard here in just a minute, but uh, I think Whitehall they're a team that scores well offensively, and they've showed that over the second half of the year against teams they can beat. Uh, Big Rapids' his defense has played really well. Guys up front, Caden Schuberg, that offensive line especially and defensive line, both those guys they've played incredible football. They're going to be tested. Max Bowman is going to be really asked to move three, four yards up against that Whitehall front to set up a lot of these big plays for Cole Heist and Garrett uh, Garrett Foster, Wyatt Skier, and these guys, they're going to need that consistent run game to open up the pass against Whitehall, and they're going to have to be contained. They're going to have to be very contained on the back end. Defensive backs, they're going to be put to the test this week because Whitehall's going to spread them out, whether it's scrambling at the quarterback, outside runs, or just for a lot of short plays, short passes, they're going to be put to the test. It's going to be really fun to see, but Mark, you mentioned it. Some of the games that we have, I mean, this is a fun week to still be playing, but it's a fun week to still be watching football. If you are at home on Friday night and you're watching some of these games, uh, I mean, kudos to you because this is going to be an incredible matchup here under the lights here as we're literally losing daylight here <laughs> recording this episode. But, I mean, first of all, we'll get through these here really quick and get you on your way. Central Montcalm at Nuego. Central Montcalm is a better team than what we saw last year. And you know who also is? The Nuego Lions. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. You want the tell of the tale. What? How good really is Central Montcalm this year? They've thrown the football really well. They've moved it offensively very well. Their defense has been very good at times. They've been a little bit of an underrated crew when it comes to that white division when you look at teams like Kent City that have been good. Uh, so they're going to be put to the test. Nuego kind of scrapped it out against Montague. Not their cleanest game. Montague gave them a lot that they couldn't handle at first, but they were able to really bounce back. And so it's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to seeing that matchup with those two teams. And uh, I think especially Central Montcalm, 
If you want to play and you want to be up there ranked with the big boys, this is your prime time test to do it. Yeah, and I mean, here's the thing about a Montague team, too. We know that they're down this year, but they're well coached. Always. And when you come into the playoffs with with, uh, a team that's well coached, anything can happen. So, yeah, there was a struggle in that game with uh, New Eagle, but they came out with a win, right? So... Um, and I look forward to that. I mean, six of the seven teams that we that we played that made the playoffs are still in. Still in. Uh, it's going to change this week, <laughs> especially with one of the games that you're going to talk about in just a second. Absolutely. And uh, on the other side as well, uh, we got McBain in North Muskegon. Wow. Wow. And wow. That's yeah. going to be at North Muskegon. McBain is a good football team, folks. So is North Muskegon, right? Both those teams handily winning in round one. Um, but McBain... This is your real deal, right? You saw what that team did last year. You're going to be put to the test against the Norsemen. We got to see them all the way back in week one. You can go back to that episode. You could see North Muskegon at the scrimmage, throwing it around a little bit against the secondary of Big Rapids. They gave some fits yeah, against that did. offense uh, and that defensive backroom early on, so that's going to be really fun to watch. Uh, they're obviously McBain, a team that has scored at will this year. North Muskegon also, it might be it might be an offensive slugfest, but uh, it's going to be a fun game. And then, of course, of course, of, of course. course, I mean, is it only perfect for us to see Glen Lake and Beale City play football against each other? Oh my goodness, this is cinematic stuff. Up in Maple City, I'm hoping that game is going to get game of the week, but I don't think it's going to because Kingsley and Boyne City is also a game yeah. that is really, really good. So that one might get the draw, but you're going to see highlights of that game. It is too good not to miss. It is going to be two teams with athletes all over the place, a lot of skill, and just a lot of fun football going to be played on that Friday night game. High school playoff football, man. It's Here fun. we go. It's going to be great. Eight divisions, 16 schools left in each division, eight games, 32 games on Friday night, and it's just going to be it's going to be a blast. Absolutely. We'll see what defense steps up between those two teams because they're both good, yeah. but Both offenses are really good, too. It's going to be a fun matchup. Be sure to follow along BigRapidsDailyNews.com for all of our scores and updates. You're going to catch this dynamic duo on Y102 at 6.30 p.m. on Friday for Standish Sterling here at Alumni Field on this field behind us here against Reed City Cows for a district title. We're in trophy season, Mark, and that's a good season to be a part of. You can catch Big Rapids and Whitehall over in Big Country 100.9 with Coach Scarpelli and Coach Kostecki, and uh, you can jump back and forth as well uh, throughout the broadcast, and we'll get you all up to date here on this episode of The Rundown presented by Michigan Aid Ass. Big thanks, partner. I guess we will adjourn until Friday. And yeah. uh, I can tell you what, goosebumps? It Let's might be because I'm wearing shorts in 35 Maybe. degrees, Could but be. goosebumps. It's going to be fun. Put some real shoes on your feet, <laughs> would you? I got my Merrells on. I'm just saying. Hey, you uh, <laughs> stop wearing sandals. Anyway, we'll see you guys later. Be sure to subscribe to Big Rapids Daily News. This has been an edition of The Rundown presented by Michigan Aid Ass.